What's up, guys? I'm Brad Ellingsworth. This is my YouTube channel, Coach E, devoted to all things football, especially being simple and playing fast. Um, if at any point in this video you enjoy the content, click the like button, drop a comment, and definitely subscribe. Um, I have not posted a video in a while, probably August. Uh, our football season got rolling. Practices in September, season in October, seven game season. Um, last regular season game was the first week of December, and then our tournament was only two weeks. We weren't in it, but our tournament was only two weeks. Um, so the, the full season ended mid-December. So we're not quite almost two weeks into the off season. Um, not to get too far off into tangent uh, information, this was my first year as a, a head coach filled with trials and tribulations, especially with all the COVID protocol stuff. I mean, kids wearing masks while playing. Um, just, just a lot of, there's just a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges, but we, we made it through. Um, we were one of the teams that ended up getting in our state that ended up did get a COVID case and, and, and we were shut down um, for two weeks. Um, I had some internal issues. There was, there was at one point in time, you know, the last three weeks of the year where I was a head coach, offensive coordinator, and defense coordinator. So, eventful year. Um, but I uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and I think it was good for me um, because I think you learn a lot from your fail failures. We were one and four. We won our last game of the year. We, we kicked ass on our last game of the year, but um, we did a really nice job. But we went through a lot, and I, I really think you learn a lot from those from those losses um, and those hard times. Which kind of brings me to what I'm talking about now. Um, I started off in the year running the spread, and we, last game of the year, we were in a traditional under center wing tee, and that, that's that's what we're gonna stay as long as I'm I'm there at the program. I'm the head coach of the program, so. Um, but I have in the past um, coordinated both of these offenses, and um, I wanted to, to kind of have a philosophical conversation Comparing the two now, please keep in mind that I'm talking about an under center traditional wing tee and Please keep in mind that I'm talking about high school football I'm not talking about college or any next level football I'm also not talking about any high school football that you guys go and recruit your kids and, and that, that's not a slight I, I'm just saying when I'm comparing these two teams I'm talking about your general high schools that you know, you don't know what your talent level is going to be year in and year out um so, I'm going to go through each pro and con for the wing tee and the spread. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So, we'll start with the first pro in the spread. And the first pro in the spread is much easier to sell than um, the wing tee. I mean, let's face it, right? Kids turn on the TV on Saturdays and Sundays. This is what they see the majority of the time. This is going to be a hard sell. The wing tee is going to be a hard sell to your football team nowadays. You know, kids love the flashy, you know, in the gun, read option, RPOs, throwing a whip and the bean around. You know, I mean, it's, um, it's going to be a much easier sell to your kids to run the spread. Now, there's a caveat to that. Kids, above all, love to win. So if you are running the wing tee and you're winning football games, well, your kids are going to buy in because, because again, winning cures pretty much everything. <laughs> and so, so that's the one caveat, but, but definitely spreads the easier sell. Um, looking at the first pro in the wing tee, um, I'm going to have spread guys kill me on this, but that's okay. Um, this is just uh, my opinion. I, I think that the wing tee offense can be effective despite your talent. Whereas opposed to, you know, in the spread, I, I believe that you have to have a certain level of talent to be able to effectively run the spread offense, especially at the quarterback position, especially at the quarterback position. If you don't have a dude there, uh, you know, playing QB, it's going to be tough. It's really going to be tough. Or at least if you don't have dudes, you know, that are fast and can catch the football, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, you know... And I'm going to get into some of this with some of my other points, but you know, there's one other school in our conference that are, in, that, are, that, are that is in our conference that's in the same situation that we are, but 
us in this other school compared to the other teams in our conference. I mean, we're a much, much, much smaller school. Um, and, and there are a lot of times where when you look at, when you compare the talent levels, um, we are not, we don't have as much talent as some of these other schools. And so, um, you know, this was something I really had to take into account throughout the year when I was reflecting on what offense to run. And so I just think that, you know, despite your, your talent, I, I think the wing tee can be more effective uh, than the spread. Um, going to the next pro for the spread. I mean, if you do have a collection of guys that are fast, the spread is going to exclamate that speed. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if that's misspelled. I'm a math teacher, not an ELA teacher, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's going to it's going to accentuate or exclamate your speed. Um, and the wing tee can hamper your speed if you, if you have not. Now listen, you can run any offense if you got a ton of speed and, and find a way to be good. But at the end of the day, your fast guys are going to be in much more advantageous situations in the spread than they are in the traditional wing tee. I mean, it's just fact. It's just fact. You're, you're, when when you can make really fast guys, when you make the when you can make the defense have to defend really fast guys on fifty the whole fifty three yards of the field. Um, that's extremely difficult. So, if you have a collection of the, of speed, you, that is definitely a pro of the spread offense. Okay, in my opinion. Um, the next I'm going to go to a pro of the wing tee, and again, I'm going to have spread guys argue this, but I, I again, I I'm just from ex my experience, and really, this is kind of a, a wing tee versus any offense. I think. Undersized linemen benefit in the wing team much, much more than what they benefit uh, in the spread. And some people are going to say, "Well, this isn't a, this isn't a style of offense issue. This is a gap scheme versus man scheme versus zone scheme issue." Uh, and there may be a little bit of truth to that, but I, I still think even if you're running gap scheme, you know, concepts here in in the spread. I still think your gap scheme in the wing T is going to be way more beneficial or and, and, and been advantageous for your undersized guys in the wing T. Um, and and just like the first game of the year this year, we uh, in terms of size we played probably the largest the team that had the largest defensive line in our state and 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 we were very we were we were small up front we're not we're not huge. You know, our, our, our biggest guy was probably 210 pounds. Um, you know, we, we got a 175-pound center and a 185-pound tackle, you know. And so, in the beginning, I wanted to make inside zone our niche. And so, we really, really repped inside zone. And it looks great on paper. You get in the double teams where you want. And the reality is, you know, if you're running inside zone, and your center and play side guard are going to double here on a shade. And your backside guard and backside tackle are going to double on a three. And, you know, your 180-pound center and your 170-pound tackle or whatever. And, you know, your light-ass your light -ass guys, backside tackle and backside guard, are, you're, they're not moving this double team on this 300-pound guy. And they're not moving this double team on this 300-pound guy. There's no movement. So you got two double teams, two two-on-ones. Were, that are stalemated. That's a win for the defense. That is a 100% win for the defense um, because that is just giving the linebackers all the room they want to read, react. Um, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Whereas in the wing T, I think body position, head placement, the gap schemes are already um, pre snapped you know, designed to to be beneficial in terms of leverage and angles where you don't need the, the super uh, vertical movement that I think you need in like a zone, in, in an inside zone or, or even, you know, some of the pin and pull schemes that people are running now, but in the spread, um, you know, wing tee, you're getting on linebackers immediately. I mean, in a traditional wing tee, some of the, some of the run schemes are so tight um, that – a lot of times you don't even have to block a lot of the first level guys because you're running by them in the backfield. 
um, especially like guard trap and things of that nature, counters. Um, and I think it just benefits undersized linemen. I didn't mean to spend that much time on that point. Okay, so I think a pro for both is the if-then play calling structure. And some wing T guys are probably going to raise their eyebrow at me and, and say, well, what are you talking about? There is if-then structure in the spread offense as well. And, and I say that in terms of you're, there are lots of things that are, that are here in a spread offense that you can take what the defense is going to give you. If the defense does this, this then we are going to do this. Um, you know, old school wing T, read Denny Crehan, you know, Tubby Raymond, some of these guys, you know, you, you're, you're looking at what number three is doing. What's that edge defender doing? Is he squeezing? Is he upfield? What is he, is he sitting? You know, that's going to tell you what play you should run. If then structure for both, you're going to try to take what the defense is giving you. I, I might say that it's a little easier to diagnose this if then structure than this if then structure. You know, in the spread, you know, how how's the overhang lining up to our our you know slide and two by two? How are they playing three by one? Are they rotating their safeties? Are they are they in a split field coverage? You know, how are they moving the motion? You're just gonna have to do a little bit more things formationally, um, and using motions to maybe and shifts to see to diagnose what you need to call and what the defense is doing. But it's still there's there's still answers, you know. If the defense does this, then we're going to do this. Um, so, moving on to a con for both. So on the same level, I got a pro for both and a con for both that I think are similar. Uh, so, looking at the spread, uh, and this is not poking at anyone, but you know when and and because you know I'm a culprit of it as well, but. When you when you make, when you're making videos, these guys are making videos of their passing schemes, and they're against these soft zones, you know, quarters or whatever it may be. You know, that's great, looks great on paper. The reality is, there if you're at a general high school where you're going to be in, in in more games than not, where you're not more talented than the other team. Uh, what do you do when a team just says, "Well, we're going to lock you, we're going to lock your ass up, we're going to play cover zero or cover one, we're going to have a plus two man advantage or a plus one man advantage in the run box and we'll see what you can do. We're, we're, you're going to have to get rid of the ball quickly because we're going to press and we're going to, and we're going to come after you. Um, you know, you're, you're for all intents and purposes screwed. And, and I know people are going to, you know, everybody wants to be the last guy with the pen and, and somebody's going to say, well, you know, you can do this and that and this and that against man coverage. Again, it looks great on paper, but at the end of the day, you know, your quarterback still has to make that throw. Your quarterback still has to, and I just, and this is very, very difficult. You, you're in trouble if you can't complete passes down the field against this to loosen that up. If you can't, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And, and it's going to be simple for the defense to play that. Um, the wing T. I mean, people are going to say, all right, I'm going to, you know, we're going to put nine or ten in the box. We're going to, uh, you know, just – bring pressure all night long, we're going to run blitz you all night long, we're going to fill the A-gaps, um, and it can be a problem. You know, it can be a problem. How are, you, how are you going to find room to run the football? Now, having said all that, I think this is much more manageable than this is. The reason I say that, I think even if a team is loading, runs, is loading your run space and you're having trouble moving the football, I still think, and scoring points, I still think that you can manage the clock and turnovers better than you can here. If you're throwing a bunch of incomplete passes and you're lengthening the football game, it's probably not going to bode well for you. And you're probably more susceptible to throwing an interception against press zero or one, you know, especially if your quarterback's got to make extremely quick decisions. As a 16-year-old kid, you're probably more susceptible to an interception. Um, whereas here, at least you can shorten the game. And if you're fumbling the football, that's a personnel issue, right? I mean, that, that's that's just that's a personnel issue. Where whereas here, it's it, I'm sorry, it's not a personnel issue if your quarterback's throwing you know throwing interceptions because sometimes we don't have that dude at quarterback. You know, they there's going to be years unless you're a, a place that goes and recruits these quarterbacks and you have time to work with them. 
there's going to be years where you don't have that guy that can sing it in there. Um, so both cons, I do think this is more manageable. Uh, so let's go down to the next pro for uh, spread. And the spread, and, and firsthand, this is my first year ever coordinating, well, first half a year ever coordinating defense. Uh, when I took over the last three years, or throughout the last three games on uh, defense this year, um, we, we, we faced one of the, not one of, they're the best spread team in our state, hands down, in my opinion. Um, they're also in our conference. And they're, they are hard schematically to game plan for. I was, I, I mean, it, six, seven hours, I was just trying to figure out how we were going to align. I mean, they, they use shift and motions and different personnel packages and different personnel alignments. Um, and they were super fast tempo. They did all that in super fast tempo. Um, they were super hard to game plan for in terms of scheme and alignment. And here's the reality of the situation too is, you know, if you really want to be good against teams like that. You need multiple coverages um, because they did have a dude at quarterback um, that could really just put the ball anywhere. He was very polished. You need to be able to disguise coverages. You need to be able to run multiple coverages. And, and the reality of it is, in, in high school football, now this team was a two-platoon team, so they had a ton of offensive time. And we had to split offensive and defensive time like a lot of you guys do at practice. And the reality of it is, we don't have enough time to run five different coverages and to, to learn how to disguise them all. You know, we ran man and we ran cover three. We, we, we touched on a little cover two, but I didn't feel comfortable with it that we could do it effectively. That's the reality. That is the reality of the situation is that we, we, ran, we, we ran cover two man against them. That, that was the best way that I, I, I felt like with their tempo that we could align. It, 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 the game plan did well for the first 12 minutes, the first quarter. And then the floodgates opened up, and, you know, we, we, got, we got our tails beat. Um, so the spread is so much harder to game plan for schematically. Whereas the wing tee, you know, you're going to identify strength one way, or, or you know, and, and you're going to put your guys here. You, all your gaps are filled up. Here's where you're going to run fit. On paper, on paper, that's much easier to align and scheme. Now, this is going to bring me to my next point on the flip side. The next pro is, and, and I'm going to explain to you why I have this as a pro, um, the wing tee is becoming foreign. The wing tee is becoming foreign. And whereas the spread is becoming the new norm. And the reason I have that as a pro, the reason, the reason I have that as a pro is because you know, you may play a 10-game schedule and you may play a 10-game schedule and now eight or nine of your teams that you play, not necessarily here in Delaware, but I know it's this way in a lot of other, other places, eight or nine teams that you play are now running spread. You might only face one team that's that's a, that's a wing tee team. And I'm talking a true under center, traditional wing tee team. I'm not talking, you know, this hybrid gun wing tee. I'm talking about under center traditional wing tee, um, it's become a foreign. So, so it may so, and here's why that's important. So it may be easier to game plan for, but if you're facing spread teams and your defensive line is used to pass rushing and, and you know attacking the mesh point and being overly aggressive, um, and your linebackers are used to aligning and and you know being in a certain spot, that's going to be difficult for your guys to adjust to playing a wing tee because your defensive line better, better be extremely disciplined. You, your defensive ends better not pin their ears back and come up the field. They better squeeze you know, and reduce run space. Your defensive tackles had better squeeze and spill any guards coming at them. You know, Linebackers are not going to be used to seeing guards go this way, quarterback go this way, back go this way. When you're really good wing tee teams running correctly, that's now all of a sudden foreign. And then, on that aspect, now all of a sudden, because it's something new, whereas you can carry, you know, if you're facing eight or nine spread teams, you can carry similar defensive game plans week to week, and then all of a sudden, you got to play defense differently 
That could be an issue. That could be an issue. Um, so moving on to uh, our last pro and con for both. The, the, the next pro uh, for the spread is that it's 100,000% easier to take advantage of individual matchups. My guy is better than that guy. And I'm going to put him in advantageous situations to take advantage of that. You know, whether it's you put him in a three-by-one stack, you put him as a stack guy, throw a screen to him, you you run him in motion, you you put him in a, in a backfield in like 20 personnel and he's running an RPO or whatever it may be. You put him out of split in in, in, the, in the single side in a three-by-one set and you're taking advantage of something like that. Whatever it may be, there's all sorts of different ways to take advantage of your individual matchups in the spread than in the wing tee. There's not many ways in the wing tee to take advantage of an individual matchup. Most studs in the wing tee are going to be placed at fullback. Most of most of your dudes, if you're running a wing tee system, you're going to place at fullback. You may place some at halfback. I mean, we had a, a the last two out of three state titles came from a wing tee team in our state this year and in 2018. And their dude, um, you know, this year played at, at setback um, or at halfback. But... Again, it's just much easier to take advantage of individual matchups in the spread offense. And the very last pro that I have for the wing tee is that it is a much less expensive offense. And when we're talking about high school football, when you have to split practice time, you know, offense, defense, special teams, this that was a huge reason why I made the switch from the spread to the wing tee. Um, now, that's not me sitting here saying that you can practice for two days and you're running an effective offense in the wing tee. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is in terms of, you know, quarterback chemistry with receivers, throwing the ball on time, throwing the ball in pressure. Um, you know, everybody loves RPOs and RPOs look great on paper. I love RPOs. But at the end of the day, the reality is you don't have a two, three, four, five star guy. You have a, a just a kid, 16 year old kid there that you're trying to have him involved in a bunch of post snap reads whether it be second level in an RPO or first level on some sort of read option or, you know, you're, you're reading whole field in your passing game. And then, you know, if you're, if you're a team that's running option routes, it takes more reps. The crispness in your routes with the, with the receivers, it just takes way more time. It takes way, way, way more time than the wing tee does. Um, but, and the wing tee takes time. Especially up front with your precision and your blocking and, and your backfield action. But I just believe at the end of the day that the spread is a much more expensive offense. You had better be working a lot in the offseason. That's, that's for sure. Um, so anyways, guys, this is my philosophical discussion um, in high school football with wing T versus the spread. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. I, I know it was kind of a lengthy video. I apologize. Um, but if hey, listen, if you enjoyed the content, uh, hit the like button, drop a comment. And definitely subscribe. Um, I'm Brad Ellingsworth. This is my YouTube channel, Coach E. Be simple. Play fast.